Hi, everybody. It's Pastor Rob with your Bible Break Devotion. Yes, back by popular demand. I've been asked many, many, many times to bring back these short devotional videos. I love to do them. Apparently, you love watching them. So praise God. Here we go. Grab your Bibles. Go with me to the book of Genesis, first book of the Bible, chapter 49 and verse 22. I want to bring you a devotion today. What do you do when you hit the wall? When life hits the wall and you have a massive obstacle, what do you do? What do you do when you hit the wall? It's a great, 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 uh, great truth we're going to learn from the Bible today. In Genesis chapter 49 and verse 22, I'm giving you time to look it up. What we have here is Jacob. Jacob's about to pass off to heaven. He's gathered all of his 12 sons together, and he's giving them an inspired review of their life and events, but then he's giving a prophetic view forward. And then he gets to his most famous son, Joseph. Joseph that the Bible spends so much time recording about and, and God teaching us about. And there were so many wonderful lessons to learn in the life of Joseph. He was a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. He overcame so many issues. But I love how God summarizes or gave uh, Jacob this, this inspired summary of his life. Uh, notice with me in Genesis 49, 22, it says, And Joseph is a fruitful bough. That's a, a limb of a tree even a fruitful bough by a well. That's important. And then this last phrase, whose branches run over the wall. That's right. Joseph hit the wall. You say, what was that wall? Well, if you know anything about the backstory of Joseph, what happened was, was this. He grew up in an incredibly dysfunctional home. I mean, if you think your home was chaos, this guy had three stepmothers. He had his mom and then three other stepmothers. He had 12 other half-brothers uh, in his home and a couple of sisters. They were all fighting and squabbling. There was chaos. There was turmoil. There was conflict and everything. He's a, it's a picture of a dysfunctional spiritual home and physical home. And because of all of that, there was that not only infighting in the spouses, uh, there was competition with the children, but what happened, there was, a, there was a spirit of animosity that grew up in that home. And, and people were just at odds, and they were trying, always vying for one-upmanship. Well, they didn't like Joseph. He was the young brat. And, uh, but he was favored of God and favored of, his, uh, favored of his father. He was a good young man, a spiritual young man, an observant young man. And, and God gave him a vision and a dream for his future, and, and his brothers despised him. And so what they did is they said, one day, hey, let's take, this, let's take this dreamer and let's throw him in a pit. Let's watch him die, all right? Let's see what happens to his dreams. Hey, you thought your family was crazy. No one tried to kill you, all right? And uh, then one of the brothers got a, even a better idea. Hey, hey, why, why just let the guy die? Let's sell him and make some money. Man, you thought, you thought your family was cold, all right? And, uh, but they did. They sold him into, into slavery and sent him down into Egypt, separated from his family, cut off from everybody he knew, and um, terrible, absolutely terrible. Listen, he hit, he hit the wall, and, and then he went down to Egypt, and, and you know the story. He, he served in Potiphar's house, and after a long period of time, he, he rose to a, a place of preeminence, and uh, he was trusted. And then his, his boss's wife accused him of sexual assault. She tried to seduce him. Then when he wouldn't give in, he was a moral man, uh, she accuses him of rape or attempted rape. And of course, that gets him thrown in prison and uh, totally smears his character. Hey, what are you in for? And he was in for sexual assault, raping his boss's wife. And, uh, and uh, or that's what he was accused of. He didn't do it. He was innocent, but he was falsely accused and framed. And so he hit another wall. Uh, but God was with Joseph. And he went through all of that. And listen, God used all of that tr trouble and turmoil to put Joseph at the right place at the right time to meet the right people that when Pharaoh needed a dream interpreted, there was a guy, the butler, and he says, hey, I know the guy, and I know right where he is. He's in prison. And he said, this guy can tell you what he was. And he was. And, 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 and God had a plan and a purpose through all of that chaos. But anyway, as God had given to his father a, a vision, a summary of all of those walls. He hit the wall in his family. He hit the wall when he went to Egypt. He hit the wall when he, when he went into uh, to the prison. Listen, what do you do when you hit an object you cannot go through? The Bible says, whose branches ran over the wall. Joseph hit the wall. Now, what did he do? Well, first of all, I notice here, even a fruitful bough by a well. You know what Joseph did? Joseph never gave up on God. Listen, my friend, in all your trouble and all your problems and all the craziness of life and all the politics and everything that's going on, listen, my friend, Joseph, he put his roots down in the refreshing well of a relationship with God. You want to know the secret of Joseph's life? You know why he could overcome all of these continual obstacles? Because he was, a, he was planted by the well. He was by the rivers of living water. Listen, he knew God. God never gave up on him, 
and he never gave up on God. My friend, that's one of the greatest truths of Joseph's life. But then the Bible says because he was planted by the well, listen, his roots went down. He never dried up. He never gave up, never gave up, got a bitter, angry, revengeful spirit. It says this, whose branches run over the wall. You know what he did? Listen, when that picture, there's a picture of a tree and a wall. It couldn't go through the wall. It couldn't go under the wall. See, my friend, you know what he did? He went above the wall. It says whose branches run over the wall. There's a great truth right there. Listen, Joseph demonstrates what do you do when you hit the wall? You just grow over it. You just grow over it. There's three things that was modeled in in, in Joseph's life. Number one, persistence. Persistence. Listen, he just kept going forward. What do you do when you hit the wall? Persistence, my friend. Just keep going forward. Do right. Do what you can do. Do what you can do right there. Persistence. Number two, resilience. If persistence is to go forward, resilience is to get up. Get up. Listen, Joseph kept getting knocked down, and he got up. Knocked down, and he got up. Knocked down, and he got up. Listen, my friend. Resilience is necessary in this day. This is a hard day. This is a different day. This is not just easy peasy, cheesy Christianity and, and, and uh, uh, apple pie America anymore. Listen, my friend, if you're going to name the name of Christ, if you're going to live by the scriptures, listen, my friend, you're going to get some resistance. And to stand up and step up and speak up, we're going to need resilience. That's to get up. But the third thing that Joseph did or Joseph had, number one, he had persistence. Number two, he had resilience. But number three, he had faith. You know what? If persistence is to go forward and resilience is to get up, listen, faith is to look up. Joseph never took his eyes off God. Joseph never allowed the hardships to give him a hard heart. And Joseph's secret was this. He didn't get, listen, he couldn't go through the wall. He couldn't go around the wall. He couldn't go under the wall. So you know what he did? He grew above the wall. And he bore fruit. He says a fruitful vow, fruitful bow over the wall. He just kept bearing fruit. He just kept going and going forward for God. So my friend, that's what you do when you hit the wall. I'm Pastor Rob. I hope you've enjoyed this Bible break devotion, and I look forward to seeing you next week.